This is the first installment in a two-part series to review diagramming sentences in English. First, we're going to talk about the basic rules that you'll need for diagramming sentences before we talk about each of them more specifically. The first rule is that you want to identify the elements of the sentence. Go back to the previous videos if you need a review of identifying sentence elements. Your next step is that you'll place the subject, verb, and direct object together in that order and underline them. You will then separate the subject from the verb with a vertical line that crosses through the underline. Next, you'll separate the direct object from the verb with a vertical line that does not cross the underline. This distinction is important. You want to keep adjectives and articles with the noun they modify and place them on separate diagonal lines touching the word they modify. In other words, if words are a unit in the sentence, they need to be a unit in the diagram. Let's start out with a basic sentence. This sentence is monkeys eat. Monkeys is the subject and eat is the verb. So we take the subject, monkeys, and the verb eat and we place them next to each other and underline them. Then we draw a vertical line that separates the subject from the verb. This vertical line does cross the underline. What happens if we have a direct object? In this sentence, monkeys eat bananas, we ask the question, what do monkeys eat? Since we answer that question with bananas, bananas is the direct object. So going back to our steps, we place the subject, the verb, and the direct object on a line together. Then we underline that group, monkeys eat bananas. Next, we separate the subject from the verb by drawing a vertical line that does cross the underline. Then, we separate the verb from the direct object with a vertical line that does not cross the underline. This is what we do when we have a direct object in the sentence. Next, let's see what we do when we have words that modify either our subject or our direct object. In this sentence, the fat monkeys eat yellow bananas. The and fat describe the monkeys and yellow describes the bananas. Going back to our initial steps, we pull out the subject monkeys, the verb eat, and the direct object bananas, and we place them on a line together and we underline them. Next, we separate the subject and the verb with a vertical line that crosses the underline. Then we separate the verb and the direct object with a vertical line that does not cross the underline. The and fat are both words that describe the monkeys, so they need to form a unit and stay together as a unit in the diagram. We indicate this by placing those words each on their own separate diagonal line that touches the line with the word they describe. The and fat describe the monkeys, so they're connected to the monkeys in the diagram. Yellow describes bananas, so it's on its own diagonal line coming out from bananas, the word it modifies. Here's another basic rule. If you have an indirect object, it's connected to the verb by a slanted line with two or four on the slanted line, and that slanted line becomes a line parallel to the underline with the indirect object on it. In this sentence, the monkeys offer the bananas to the gorillas. Monkeys is our subject, offer is our verb, bananas is the direct object, and gorillas is the indirect object because it describes to whom the bananas are given. As always, we pull out subject, verb, direct object, and underline them. Because the forms a unit with monkeys, it comes on a diagonal line off of monkeys. Bananas also forms a unit with the, so the is on a slanted line. We always separate our subject and our verb with a vertical line that crosses the underline, and the verb and the direct object with a vertical line that does not cross the underline. Now let's deal with the indirect object phrase. The indirect object is to the gorillas. So we draw a slanted line off of offer, because that is to whom it is offered. 
we place two on the slanted line and then we make the line parallel to the underline and we write the noun of the direct object, gorillas, on that line. We then, because gorillas and the form a unit, draw a diagonal line off of the gorillas underline to connect the to gorillas. There's even more basic rules. When you have a linking verb, one of those equal sign verbs, the second subject, or as we know it now, the predicate nominative, is written on the same line with the subject and verb, as if it were a direct object. But we indicate that it's not a direct object because we separate the predicate nominative from the verb by a slanted line that does not cross the underline instead of a vertical line. In this sentence, monkeys are goofy animals. Monkeys is our subject, are is our linking verb, animals is our predicate nominative, the second subject, and goofy modifies animals. So we place the subject, monkeys, the verb, are, and the predicate nominative on a line together. We underline it. We separate the first subject, monkeys, from the verb are by a vertical line that crosses the underline, just like always. But instead of making a vertical line connecting are and animals, because animals is a predicate nominative, we make a slanted line to separate are and animals, and that slanted line does not cross the underline. Here we have goofy, which is an adjective that modifies animals, so goofy must touch animals in the diagram and comes off in a diagonal line. Our final basic rule is that for our imperative command statements, the subject you is implied. You don't say you dance, you just say dance. So that implied subject is included in parentheses. As I said before, the sentence in this case is dance. You could point out to someone and they would understand that they were supposed to dance. So what you do is you write the implied subject, you, in parentheses, before the given verb, dance. You draw an underline between those words and then you separate the subject, the implied subject, you, from the verb dance by a vertical line that crosses the underline. These are our basic rules. Feel free to go back and watch this video as many times as you need to to clarify your understanding of the basic rules of sentence diagramming.